The jungles of eastern Myanmar are home to more than 1.5 million Karen people. Hardships and heartache run deep here. The tiny villages that dot these hills are ground zero in the world's longest running civil war, one that spans three quarters of a century. Poverty and lack of access to basic services like education and health care make survival a daily struggle, even in villages removed from the fighting between the Burmese military and Karen insurgents. But these are not the only battles being fought here. A spiritual conflict rages as well. The Karen were one of the first people groups in Southeast Asia to embrace the gospel. Yet, today, 80% of the Karen living on the Thai Myanmar border are Buddhist, animist, or Muslim. Here, amid the darkness of superstition, spirit worship, and demonic oppression, ASAP Ministries operates nearly 50 schools, including Tiki Adventist School, where many displaced and marginalized Karen young people are encountering Jesus for the very first time. I came to Tiki in 2012 to help build the school. We chose this location because there were not many schools in the area. Before we started cutting the jungle to build the school, we asked the Buddhist village leaders for permission to teach Bible classes. The village leaders agreed to Polu's request. They were happy that they wouldn't have to send their children to school in Thailand anymore. Soon, children from surrounding villages began flocking to the new school in Tiki. But 12-year-old Patu was not among them. Many kids from my village started attending Tiki, but my family didn't want me to go. They are devout Buddhists, and they were concerned about the influence of the Christian teachers. When my friends came home on breaks, they would tell me the Bible stories they heard at school. One of my friends told me about creation and the second coming of Jesus. It made me feel peaceful and happy inside, and I wanted to learn more. Patu began asking her parents to let her attend Tiki Adventist School with the rest of her friends, and eventually they agreed on one condition. She must not become a Christian. But as Patu attended Bible classes and worships at school, a longing began to grow in her heart. The more I understood the Bible, the more joy I felt. I wanted the hope of everlasting life, and I wanted to be ready when Jesus comes. So, even though my parents forbid me, I decided to get baptized. I didn't know much about the Holy Spirit then, but looking back, I believe it was the Holy Spirit that gave me the courage I needed to follow through. Patu's parents were furious when they learned that she had been baptized. Her mother sent her a message telling her that she was no longer welcome at home. Sadly, this is a common response when young people at Tiki give their lives to Christ. Many times after our students get baptized, their parents don't accept them in their home anymore. They try to frighten them with words and destroy their hope. But because of God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, the students became courageous in the midst of hardship. And we give them a place to stay in our dormitory and do what we can to make them feel at home. It broke my heart when my mother said I couldn't come home anymore. I felt like I had lost the only family I had. But my friends and teachers became like a family to me. They encouraged me and prayed with me. I began fasting and praying on my own too, and God gave me peace about my situation. 
Later, Patu's parents changed their minds when her mother became sick. They asked her to come home, but she soon discovered that they were still unwilling to accept her newfound faith in Jesus. My mother blamed me for her illness. She said the spirits were bothering our family because of my decision to get baptized. They tried to get me to bow down and take part in their spirit worship ceremonies. First, they bribed me with money. They offered me property and anything I wanted if I would worship the spirits with them. But I told them, Jesus is more important than money. The only thing I want is everlasting life. When Patu refused their bribes, her family threatened her and told her she could not go back to school. But she remembered how her teachers had prayed with her and reminded her of the faithfulness of Daniel and his three friends in Babylon. She determined that she would remain faithful to God too. She didn't give in to her family's demands. Instead, she returned to Tiki Adventist School where she continues to grow in her faith and pray for the conversion of her family. We were amazed by Patsu's courage to follow God. For a young child to make that decision to stand firm in the truth is very difficult. To see her faith for us as teachers, there is no greater joy. Coming here has changed my life. Because of this school, I met God. And as I study and learn more of His Word, I believe He is calling me to be a missionary. I want to be a teacher and help people get to know Jesus just like me. At ASAP Ministries, it is our mission to restore and disciple those marginalized by society and family and empower them to become missionaries for Christ. Here in our schools on the Thai-Myanmar border, more and more Karen young people like Patu are taking their stand for truth and preparing to take the gospel to their people. It is so thrilling to witness. But stories like these are only possible because of the spirit-filled prayers and generosity of people like you. Will you partner with us in the work of transforming young people like Patu from marginalized to missionary? Because Jesus is coming soon, now more than ever, mission matters. <laughs>